manipulation of the dogs. This is a lesson that humanity has not learned, but we are learning it in the care of dogs. And the new vision of rabies control is the presence of dogs, but the absence of rabies. A very minimal change in the social structure, but a terribly important one. And one that I believe we must also learn. Today, AIDS is the shadow on our world. Newly recognized, first diagnosed in 1981 in the United States, it is very serious and it threatens to disrupt society once again. And the world sits on a wall, teetering on the brink of a great fall. The AIDS virus is one of a family of viruses called the retroviruses. First recognized in Denmark in 1908 in poultry, the first of the human retroviruses was identified in 1980. The AIDS virus was recognized in 1983. The most recent recognition has been the retrovirus of cats in 1987. The virus attacks the immune system, the group of cells of the immune system called the T lymphocytes which are important in cell-mediated immunity and it reduces also our circulating antibody immunity and without the immune system we are unable to cope with the infections that surround us. The African monkey was recognized in 1982 to have a virus that is very similar to the AIDS virus and a, an AIDS virus called HIV-2 has been recognized more recently that is almost identical to the virus in monkeys. 30 to 70 percent of the green monkeys of Africa are infected with this, doing them essentially no harm, but let it get into the Asian monkeys or the monkeys of South America and they die of disease that is almost identical to AIDS in people. The source of the AIDS virus must be Africa, and it must have been in the African monkeys sometime long, long ago before it got into people. But today it is in people, and the African monkeys are not a threat to us probably we are a greater threat to them. On a world basis, there are approximately 250,000 recorded cases of AIDS. In the United States, about 66,500. On a world basis, between 5 and 10 million people infected with AIDS. In the United States, about 1.5 million people infected with AIDS. We expect in the next five years at least a million additional cases in the world, at least 30,000 additional cases in the United States, and we expect that all 160 countries in the World Health Organization will be reporting AIDS in the next five years. On the world map, the countries where AIDS has been most recognized so far are shown in red, but it masks a great deal, for in the central part of Africa, reporting is only beginning. And we don't have a darker red for that area, which has got to come. In the United States, we are grateful to see that Iowa falls into the yellow category of states with the lowest occurrence of AIDS, at least so far. AIDS antibodies are recognized in blood stored in Zaire as long as since 1959. In many areas of Central Africa, in the urban areas, 15 to 20 percent of the adults have antibodies against AIDS. 
and that includes Uganda, Congo, Rwanda, Tanzania, Zaire, and Zambia. The incubation period is from less than 1 to 15 years, average 8 to 9 years. Thus, from the time that young people become sexually active, they are going to be essentially out of college before AIDS would strike them. And as a very brilliant speaker said here one evening fairly recently, when you go back to your fifth, fifth year anniversary, that will be the time that you will have a moment of silence for those who have died of AIDS. It principally attacks young males. In the categories of cases, by far the largest group are homosexual and bisexual men. I hope that no one is offended by this picture because it shows it as it is. And the second group are intravenous drug users rising rapidly in many areas of the developing country 66 or more percent of the prostitutes are infected with AIDS. The hemophiliacs are a very tragic group. This man, a very well publicized family, was a hemophiliac and he got AIDS from blood transfusion before the time when, uh, when tests were done. He infected his wife by natural intercourse. She infected the infant during natural childbirth and of that family only the girl looking at her father is still living today. <coughs> and perinatal infection of the innocent infants is a total tragedy and we read that six percent of babies born in New York City today are infected and in many areas of Central Africa that figure is greater than 25 percent of the infants that are born. Iowa has had a little over 122 cases now. This was as of the first of the year, and it shows that at least half of the counties have them. All of us should be very close to knowing someone who has or has died of AIDS. In the absence of the immune system, the body becomes susceptible to a very wide variety of diseases that would not cause us any harm and to a variety of types of cancers. And the first signs and symptoms are tiredness, loss of appetite, loss of weight, fever, chronic diarrhea, enlargement of the lymph nodes, and becoming very thin. And then other conditions attack. And the Kaposi's sarcoma, a blood-filled tumor, is one of these and is, is so frequent in persons who suffer from AIDS. And the quilt that has been put on display in Washington and in New York with 33,000 names of those who have died of AIDS on it, about one half of the total number of US cases. But it is in Africa that the great numbers of funerals are going to be taking place, far more than the case here in the United States. And this father in Somalia is weeping at the grave of the seventh son that has died of AIDS in his family. And World Health Organization is entering into this disease control with a global program against AIDS. A worldwide effort will stop it, and indeed that is the only thing that is going to stop it. Education is their principal emphasis at the present time, and the recognition that it is indeed safe to visit those in the hospital with AIDS, that it will not be transmitted by this type of contact, in spite of 
pictures that we see like this of suited up in Hong Kong to remove the body of a person who had died of AIDS. It is going to be of little gain to us in the West if we control AIDS if the rest of the world is destabilized by it. It costs us presently about fifty to sixty thousand dollars per patient who dies of AIDS in this country and in Kinshasa Zaire with a fourth of the hospital beds holding patients with AIDS there is no way that that kind of money can be found and if these countries are destabilized by AIDS we are not going to have stability either. AIDS kills and this publicity of the World Health Organization vividly identifies this. And the World Health Organization program will emphasize prevention, care for the infected, and coordination among the countries, and the building of laboratories to test blood for the presence of antibodies as this one here in the Zambia. And perhaps the second most important quote that I have put up is that we learn in a time of pestilence that there are more things to admire in men and I would say and in women than to despise. In 41 years the World Health Organization has worked to achieve this goal and to recognize this. If only the nations of the world could take 10% of their money that they put into arms this year and put it into World Health Organization, the additional stability and the additional control of the disease would add far more than 20% to the removal of disease. And if that were done year after year until we reached zero in arms and 100% of that great budget going to World Health Organization, this cause of instability and death is one of the things that we dare to predict could be removed. And so at the end of looking at all of the things that World Health Organization is doing, we really should look at its headquarters, its nerve centers. There are seven. The main headquarters on your left there is in Geneva, Switzerland. This is the branch office, the regional office in Washington, D.C., one of the five regional offices. And time does not permit me to describe the immunization program of World Health Organization for immunizing children against the important diseases, which saves at least a million lives a year, the decade of safe water, the seeking that everyone should have safe water by the year 2000, the program in primary health care, all of these are a part of the emphasis and goals of the World Health Organization. I thank you. Thank you very much for coming, and especially for those who stood. Believe me, I know how you feel because I also stood. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so glad you were here. Very good. Just so glad you were here. I know that you recognized numerous of the artworks that I included. I think like a Tremendous. friend. I'm really glad you could come. Tremendous. How are you? Barbara, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Who are you? I'm our daughter. Oh, how nice. How nice. I'm so glad you could come. So glad you could come to me. Thank you very much.